water is the very foundation of Venice. I'm with Luca Zaghia, a coastal oceanographer. He studies how sea levels and currents affect the lagoon and the buildings of Venice. Luca is taking me to the Cadoro, one of the oldest palaces in the city. Today, there are very serious concerns about rising waters and crumbling buildings. Here there is one and a half thousand, more or less, uh, years of history of coexisting with water. Everybody knows Venice is sinking and also sea level rise. The combination of these two things gives Venice a much higher frequency of floods. Although it is made up of 118 islands, Venice was primarily constructed on platforms built directly into the lagoon, a defense against mainland invaders. The water is the new invader because this is what we have to deal every day. The continuous rising of tidal levels will affect monuments. So Venetians have always been fighting to survive, and now it's the water that they're fighting. Yeah, exactly. That's the next enemy. But the water is what gives them life. It's almost poetic. Yes. <laughs> We're here because I want to take you inside and explore the problems of Venice from within. Let's go. Let's go. When the Cadora was built in the 15th century, these steps were the main entrance to the palace. And the main facade of the building is always facing the canal because this is the entrance of friends for parties. This is the place where they did business. So Luca, these are the steps. And in the past, they were out of the water. There have always been tidal surges and even terrible floods that rose through the first floor. Salt is everywhere. You have it here, you have it over there. That's all white. That's so much salt. Wow. Capillarity can, can make the seawater be absorbed up to the level of the second floor. They're falling apart. Yeah. And is this because of the, the water? Because of the crystallization of sea salt into the bricks. This is actually all salt. You can try it if you want to taste it. Taste it's, it? It's really sea salt. OK. So yeah. it looks like salt That's to me. That's enough. <laughs> It tastes like what you'd have on your table. And it's happening faster than it normally would. Now we just try to react and compensate. It's obvious as you travel the canals that Venice relies on the water for everything. Traditionally, the tide flushes the canals of the city twice a day. That was the most amazing way of getting rid of sewage. Yeah. Venice was cleaner just by being here. And that's why it's so important to maintain the flushing of the lagoon by the tide. Luca is taking me to the Arsenale, the historic shipyard, to see the giant water gates of the $7 billion Mosaic project, Venice's best chance for survival. These gates will moderate the storm surges while still allowing the tides to flush the lagoon. Venice must maintain this delicate ecological balance if it is to have any future. So those barriers yes. are put into yes, the water. Yes, on this side, on the right side, they have hinges which are attached to the concrete structure which is under the seafloor. Uh -huh. And they will be pneumatically raised, stopping the flood from invading Venice. It's a massive, massive project. So, Luca, what does this all mean when you sum it all up? Venice always fighted against the water and always found a solution. 